Hey guys, it's Queen Deja, and in today's video, I will be reacting to movie four of The Garden of Sinners. All right, so finally, after like three freaking movies, we are now officially going to see the story slash the connection of Shiki, Kyoko, and Miki. This is something that I've wanted since movie one, but thank God that, you know, we're getting this now because as someone who got into this and I think I can kind of speak for almost everybody when you watch the first movie and you see them together and the dynamic and everything that they have you you're questioning it a lot it's like okay what were y'all three like before all of this like before we already know the situation of Shiki and Miki and how that was but it's like okay adding Kyoko and into the mix how was it? Like, something tells me that, like, Shiki and, and Kyoko, mm -mm, they wasn't, you know, all buddy-buddy like they currently are right now. So, something tells me maybe we might see these two, you know, not see eye-to-eye -eye at times. Because, like, now they're, they're really, really good together and such. And so, I feel like if they're going to argue in this film, maybe a lot, but not a lot, a lot you think Miki is gonna come in and be like okay you two for like five fucking minutes like stop fucking fighting or some shit but I don't know but other than that let's go ahead and get started with movie four in three two one go all right how dark are we getting this week I mean last week we had a freaking rape scene so how dark are we going now Damn, y'all are getting close to my birth year. Like, just mine is three more years. This had to be the night. Because that's got to be, that is shaky. Mm-hmm. You know, Miki, you could have lied and said, hey, I'm the freaking husband of her. Oh. And you are? Are you Shiki's dad? Police officer? You couldn't say her, could they? Yeah, but no, she's fine. We, I mean, we all know she's fine.
What in the ghost in the shell is this shit? Hold up, now. What What are we doing? She in the in, in between? She in purgatory? Yeah, you're in purgatory! every day oh my god that's love that's fucking love oh my god oh so many years later even after when she's still there he still sees her he's so fucking cute oh my god stop it like Honestly, Shiki, I don't know, girl. I'm. Mm. Is she going to be like this for the majority of the film? Until, you know, she wakes up or something? I mean, I'm already confused, but, you know. You going to wake up? No? Oh. That thing is too fucking small to read. Oh. Her eyes, yeah. Damn, she just disintegrated her roses. Jesus. Yeah, but only if y'all knew what the fuck she looking at right now. Oh my god. 
Because she can't control it right now. You can't go in there though. Oh, oh. We not going to talk about that? Okay. I know, I thought she'd be looking like Kitty Doll, but like, no, she still looks pretty, but poor baby. I said I not kill Kofi at Toko, my bad. Mm -hmm. No. <laughs> oh my god, cheeky. <laughs> Jesus, it's already sound like you don't like Togo. <laughs> I mean, she's just here. You can't be a bitch all the time. I mean, seriously, she being a bitch is not gonna really get you anywhere. Yeah, you know, some guys like that in girls, but you know, honestly, like, damn. Now, see, is Topo going to fix Shiki's eyes?
wouldn't take that off if I was you. I mean, you fucked up your eyes. Like, goddamn. Mm. Yeah. She's too damaged right now. Well. <laughs> Toko just basically lied up to him, right? I mean, she saying, yeah, like, yeah, the old game. Mm -hmm. Okay, my ass. Of course, it'll be nurses making the rounds. Hmm? Hey, um, um, oh, okay, that's murder shiki, right? Uh huh. Of course, yeah, because Topo got to make sure you okay, girl. two are going to make a really good friendship. I mean, you know, you might not see eye to eye, but you know, it's okay. <laughs> Excuse me. Yeah, remember that night? Mm, you almost died. <laughs> she, I mean, in a way, she feels like a shell. I don't think so either. I mean, mm -hmm. 
But then, hold on. Like, but what if he says something wrong that might trigger something in her? Great. Yeah. Let me guess, we're probably not getting that answered until later on, right? Okay. That was going to talk well. Hmm. Mm mm. I don't trust that. Jesus. There's got to be a way she can control it. I mean, we know, like, up on movie one, she's able to control it. But as of right now, like, how the fuck she can? Shit. Shit, go ahead, boo. I ship it. Mm hmm.
You're seriously just going to leave her like this? Nah. How the fuck did you get in her room though? What the hell? Really? Uh -uh. There you go, fight back. I mean, god damn. The fact that it's, it's that dude's body, what the absolute fuck. Well damn, you know, somebody gonna have to clean his body up, shit. So, um, Shiki, you want to take the bandage off now and, you know, just kill him like that? Or, uh, Toko, you going to do something? Okay! Is that really enough, though?
They'll still come back no matter what. So then what else are you supposed to do? Wait, I mean... <sighs> She looks so pretty with her long hair and diamond and her blue eyes and that like uh mystic eyes just pretty. Hell she looked like Sawa, but you know we can't talk about Jonah on here like oh my god. Mm. That detail, though, I mean, honestly, that was pretty. Like, ooh. So is Toko just going to take her and, and just tell the hospital, oh, hey, she left her in the night or whatever. Uh-oh. Want to stop her? Hey, hey, um. Where are you going? Mm -hmm. If you work for her. See, it starts to a beautiful friendship. Wait, hold on, time out. So then who was Toko's familiar? Are we going to get answers on that? Uh -oh. Was Toko's familiar like one of the dolls that she made? The one who kind of really looks like an exact replica of Shiki that was in the room with her and Miki? Okay, we got nine minutes left.
No matter what, they always there for each other. Oh, God, I can't. This is so... <laughs> Mm -hmm. And to start a new too. They're not about to play credits for night for No y'all not. No. No. No, 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 don't do it. Don't do it. Do not, you motherfuckers. Who rolls credits at the fucking 37 minute mark? So we're about to have almost like five, six minutes of credits. Okay. Finally seeing the story or the relationship of Shiki, I'm about to say Kyoko, Toko and Miki. It, it's interesting. I, I kind of wish there was a little bit more. I was expecting her and Shiki to argue a lot because it seems like when you look at Toko and Shiki's relationship in movie one to movie three they they don't bicker thank god they're really like okay in, in an okay relationship great relationship they just seem like the type of co-workers slash friends where we're like yeah we just we're only friends because of our work and that's it but it, it's interesting to see how she wanted to help Shiki because I like the biggest thing is I was wondering I was like yeah what how with her eyes how are we gonna get that solved she wanted to help her you know Shiki was like eh, but until she you know Shiki was ready to you know do it all on her own she was just like yeah okay now I want you to help me to learn how to use this but at the same time you know if I help you you have to work for me it, it's basically a deal at the end of the day no matter what so their partnership is just a deal but it kind of really started out with Miki and Toko because Miki was the one who asked Toko to help Shiki in order for her to be back to the way she is currently because she's not real she's not murder Shiki anymore she's regular old Shiki but it seems like she still somewhat has a little bit of murder as Shiki inside of her I'm not 100% sure but let me go ahead and ask this at the beginning of this movie this had to be right after the point where she wanted to stab Miki right or was it at the point of the end of part two of the murder movie? Because it, it, right there, I don't know. And mm, we'll see when we get there. But like, oh, okay. This one was interesting. Different, short, but interesting. I was expecting it to be a little bit longer because I felt like there was more to the story. I thought it was going to be this big, huge thing and such but mainly because of the fact is once Shiki got into the hospital she sleep for two years then she wakes up the fact that she woke up and she saw everything and immediately the first thing that she thinks of is to like like almost gouge her eyeballs out girl mm -mm. Mm -mm. the last time I saw that in a horror movie like uh uh like mm-mm as someone who loves horror movies, but just when, when they do that, like, oh, no, that's too much for me. Like, <laughs> I get such about that shit, because, like, oh, God, that was too close. Like, Jesus, she just went like, uh. But, yeah, I mean, this one was really interesting. I think I enjoyed this one out of the four, maybe the second least. The second favorite? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, um, like I said, just wish it was like a teeny tiny bit longer because, of course, I'm guessing there has to be something at the end. There's always something at the end of these movies, like a little preview to something. Well, at the end of like, no, they're after credits leading up into whatever the next movie is going to be. But 
it was nice that when she finally woke up, Nikki was there. Like, no matter what, it always comes back to those two. They're always there for each other. They're just so fucking cute. Even though it's like, I ship all three of them, and it's just like, oh my god. But, like, mainly, Shiki and Miki, that's the ultimate ship of this show and such. I, I do... What else do I want to see with this show? Um, maybe a little bit more of, of Toko's past, especially with the familiar thing. Because I need context clues on that. Like, you, you say that, you know, something happened, but what exactly happened? So, I'm guessing they're probably not going to give her, like, a full hour, two-hour film for her specifically. I get it. Maybe... Because, I mean, she's important. Like, all three of these characters are very important to this series. But it's like, okay, how important? Are we able to go ahead and do a specific story just on Toko and Toko alone before she met Miki and Shiki? But who knows? Are you fucking kidding me? Let me see your face. Did you kill your father? Oh shit, damn. Okay, does he have a connection to freaking Toko? The, uh, see, mm mm, mm mm. Y'all can't be doing this. Are you fucking kidding me? You can't do this. No, this ain't cool. Like, no. <laughs> Y'all expect me to wait until next Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, whenever the fuck I have time to have the, like, to watch this damn movie before I have it out on Friday. I, mm hmm. I might have to watch movie five on, on, on Sunday because, I mean, all I got on Sunday is, yeah, we might have to because all I got is combatants and I think I can get it done one day. But, okay. Who the F is this dude? He the big bad of this whole entire series now? I mean, he, okay, okay. So you are now telling me. He's the reason of the shit that happens in movie one and the shit that happened in movie three. And also the crap that's about to happen in movie five. Who is this mofo? Like, honestly, like, we, we gonna get a backstory on him in movie five, six, seven, before eight? 
The, oh my god, there, there's so many unanswered questions. Like, oh, oh, okay. Between Toko's familiar and then this guy, there, there's something that it, it, mm. they could go anywhere with this. I don't know. I mean, because yeah, th this whole entire series is done, but like me thinking about what the heck could happen in this next movie, and the fact is, I'm guessing with Parasite, I think that's the word, um, which. I'm guessing he either he had to kill the family or his father or his entire family and such. The question is why? If it was your father, was it jealousy or was it maybe because you were getting abused by your father? I mean, you know, like once again, this series is fucking dark. Like the things that they are going into, and I can see why this is very fucking mature and shit because like. The things that happen in these four movies are hella fucking mature. And, and really, I can't imagine if someone who um, was just triggered or like so, got something in them, you know, an influence thing or a triggering moment could sit here and watch this and stuff. It is good. Like, don't get me wrong, because like things like this really need to be talked about and such in today's society. But like, damn, like, oh, shit. What the fuck is about to happen next? I feel like. <laughs> can we go worse i mean you know last week we already did with a fucking rape scene and it's and th this one like movie four just felt very light towards whatever the fuck is about to happen in movie five like what the hell about to happen in six seven and eight if movie if movie five is about killing a father possibly what the fuck are six seven and eight about to happen with like I'm scared. I really truly am because like they could go they could go anywhere. Like I'm still thinking they're still going to do the incest thing because that's another mature thing that they could talk about. But um the other two, like especially for like cuz let's say like movie 6 is the incest. So for 7 and 8, what the well no cuz cuz one of them is going to be part 2 of the murder movie. So then the last film or whatever else is in there because who knows whenever murder the murder movie part 2 is going to be what else can they talk about? What else is dark enough that you can talk about? Yeah, they can talk about abuse, but technically they did that last week with the rape slash abuse especially, you know, with the fact that she got hit with a damn baseball bat and that was fucked up. But they still could do it in a separate movie. I'm not 100% sure. I, you know, because the biggest thing I kind of want to know is, is this series going to have a happy ending for these three characters? I, I mean, because, like, every single movie, ha except this one, um, as of right now, has been dark as fuck. And, yeah, like, you know, towards the end, everybody kind of still gets a happy ending. But at the same time, you know, the girl from the first movie, she's dead. Um... The purple hot chick. She's alive from what from from that movie. But now with this redhead kid, is he going to die in this next film? Like, are we really gonna truly kill somebody once again? Who the fuck? Y'all know. You know. I know nothing. You could tell me right now, <laughs> but you're not going to, no matter what. But like seriously, it just feels like a whole bunch of people in this next film are going to die. Like the kill count in this next film is going to be way worse than the previous films. Like, oh my god, I can't imagine it. Cause like, and, and then the gore, the gore going to be like fucking nuts. But yeah, other than that, guys, that is my reaction view towards movie four of The Garden of Sinners. If you guys enjoyed it, please give me a like. It really helps me out. Also, subscribe to my channel. I make videos every single day. Join the Master Squad. And of course, I will see you guys next Friday for movie five. Bye, guys.